All right, yes, so we're going to do this. We're going to be relatively quick about it, and then we're going to go watch this shitty show and then record. Did you already turn off the air? Yeah. Oh. And then we're going to record a bunch of stuff about it real quick. Right? Mm-hmm. And then uh, I'm going to go do my my qua. Q&A. My q da Quan Kwanza, your Quan- Kwanza celebration. Kwanda. Kwanda. How would you phonetically say Q and A out loud? Kwanda. Thank you. Why are you looking at me like I'm a weirdo? It's Kwanda. Thou view, thou view, thou view, thou view. Vow to view, vow, 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 vow to view, vow to view each other's movies, even though we don't always like them, but it's okay because we love each other and movies too. Hey everyone, welcome to Vow to View, a doof media podcast all about marriage and the things we make each other watch. My name is Lise Daly. And I am Scott Daly. And together, we're, we're the, the Dailies. Dailies. Are we going to do that same introduction still when we switch? Because I'm kind of... Yeah, we, why not? It took uh, it only took a few episodes, but I've finally gotten it down. Do you want to do something different? I don't know. I don't know. We got to play it by ear. Hello, everyone, and welcome mm. to episode 69 nice of our podcast. We have done 69 nice episodes of the show. How many times show. are you going to say that number? I think we should have like a drinking game. Every time you say it, because you want to bring attention to it, let's have a shot. This is the weekly podcast I don't like shots where anymore. my wife, Elise, and I watch 69 nice movies. Oh, God. And <laughs> We've actually watched more than that, if you want to get particular. So it's really like just the number of episodes and not movies that are watched. All right. How many episodes have there been, Elise? Well, are we talking about actual episodes that have been released? Because if that's true, then this is over. What is the episode number that we're on right now? We are on episode officially 69. Nice! Yep. And I've married a child. (laughs) All right. Uh, Each week, my wife Elise and I select a movie Mm -hmm. loosely tied around a theme of our choice. And then we make the other person watch it. It's a show Mm -hmm. about sharing the things you love with your spouse and hopefully learning a little bit about each other and yourself in the process. Indeed. And relationships. This week we continue our theme 30 flirty and thriving. Yes. This week, Elise is even older than she was last week. (laughs) Hmm. So we are finishing up the theme this week um, with my pick, the ab... Yay, I was saved, guys. Ghostbusters 2. Guys, this like wonderful thing happened in the universe and all things aligned so that I was going to have a better week. And that meant that, you know, there's a movie that Scott wanted to watch that wasn't available anywhere. Go figure. Well, see, here's what happened. I knew The Abyss was a hard movie to find Mm -hmm. because um, it's not on Blu-ray. It's never been released in HD. They have not released a version of this movie in years. Mm -hmm. Um, But before I picked it, I went to my cool little app that says what movies are streaming in what places and saw the uh, the abyss could be seen on Cinemax, which is a movie channel that we have. So I was like, great. Perfect. This is the one place you can find it. We have it. Perfect. It's going to work out. turns out it's only streamable on Cinemax subscription for Amazon. So you know how Amazon, you can get like subscription to different channels through Amazon Prime? Now I do. Yeah. So like you can get your HBO Go, you can get your HBO subscription, your Showtime subscription, your Cinemax subscription through Amazon Prime. So you pay Amazon Ah. Prime and then you can watch it on the Amazon Prime app thing. Um, Well, that's a different thing. Even though you already have, you already pay money for Cinemax, that's a different thing. And we already pay money for Prime. Yeah. Yeah. It's a different thing. It's an extra thing that's totally different, um, and there's no app. I think that they're just trying to swindle us, Scott. I think they're just trying to make more money wherever they can. Yeah, well, we did not fall for it. We didn't. And instead of We watching, put down our foot, and we said, no, and we, we are said, not going to give you more money. We said, we ain't afraid of no ghosts. And so I, I switched at the last minute to have Elise watch Ghostbusters 2, which is also a, a movie that came out in 1989. So um, technically did not break the rules there. Mm-hmm. 
It's good. Um, and so, yeah. So that's, unfortunately, no abyss. One one day, one day we'll come back and do like a bonus episode where I no, make you watch No, I don't have abyss. to watch anymore. No, I'm so excited, true. guys. That's not true. It's going to happen at least. No. For, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer. Mm-hmm. When I ask you to watch The Abyss and when I don't. That's oh, so you're not going to ask me to watch The, the Abyss anymore. Thank not you. This week, but, I appreciate that. One Never week. again. So we're going to be talking about Thanks. Ghostbusters number two this week. Dos. The sequel. Sometimes the sequels are better than the original. But not in this case. <laughs> okay. All right. But Sometimes first. the sequels are the original. <laughs> but first. Yes. Oh, it's time, Scott. This is the last week. Is it? Yes, this is the last week. It's just there's two nights this week. Yeah. And then it starts BIP. What? Yeah. So, okay. We ready to start? Mm-hmm. The Bachelorette. <laughs> oh, you're eating that back up like a dog. It's good. Okay. That was me. I, that was just me throwing up. And midway through my throw up, I went, eh, maybe it's not so bad. Uh-oh. That's what I was doing. I don't know why um, you went to eating it up like a dog. Um, um, I thought you no. went like, oh, yeah, that's no. pretty good. No. No. What? No. I mean, throat was pretty acidic, so it doesn't ever really taste good, at least in my opinion. Oh, my God. I haven't thrown up in a while, though. Can we move on? All right, Elise. This is the penultimate episode. Well, technically, technically, this week is the final, but we record this on a Monday night and it's a two parter going on over Tuesday. So we don't know the end, the end, but it's promised to be I mean, the, w- the most exciting, dramatic moment in Bachelorette history. Chris Harrison told us to get some sleep tonight. And so that's what I intend to do is yeah, as soon as we are go, done recording this, done, we're I'm going to go to sleep. To now you have to do the Q&A I'm and some sleep. other stuff I'm and then editing. 15 hours But I mean, tonight. I got to go straight to sleep. All right, Elise, what happened in this week's episode so there's of The Bachelorette? Scott, there's a lot to go through. We don't have a lot of time. Because we have the parent, like, meeting the family dates, and then they Let's each have their own Let's just go over the things and not go date. over so, us going over the as things. As far as the family dates, Tyler against Jed, parents you definitely like over my boy, Petey Pete, going oh, home. Oh, yeah, Peter went home. We all knew Peter was going to go home. Peter went we home. It was really all, sad. We didn't all know that. I mean, if you read Reality Steve, we all knew Peter was going home. Anyway, so then we have the dates where the two men meet the family, and family loves Tyler. Family thinks that the Tyler is the bomb.com. Yes, we're going back to the phrase the bomb.com yes, because Tyler argue, is just like that. Some would argue it never left. Those uh, people would be wrong. Me. But, anyways, so then we have Jed. Jed's date with the family and Hannah. Let's just say that Jed has some concerns. Or the family has some concerns about Jed. I don't Jed. like this. I don't like this. I Why like not? it. I Why like, it. You like it. Because their concerns with the family about Jed is, oh, it seems that with a career in music, he could not provide for my daughter acceptably. This is not the 18 fucking hundreds. She has a career on her own and she's going to have a successful career because she's been on fucking TV and it's rid- it's ridiculous. And now I know that you see that. I see slightly where they're coming from, not from the financial aspect. I understand that, you know, like she can provide for herself. She has her own career. But at the same time, if you're trying to build a family, I think that having that sort of job without having the I've made it yet sort of process that you've already gone through, it's going to make it really hard because it honestly, it's going to boil down to the point where he's either, you know, like gonna continue doing the bar shows late at night while his wife is at home pregnant or with the kid or he's gonna have to say no and I think that that's gonna be a really hard thing for him to do and I understand from the I understand from that perspective where they're coming from I really do I I get it I get the concern that's their journey to take and that's it I understand that it's their decision. And if they want to go through that, knowing the struggles that they're going to have, then that's fine. And that's their choice. But I understand where the parents apprehension comes from. And that's all I'm saying. I'm not saying that it is, you know, like the parents decision. And I appreciate that. As Hannah said, you know, like I see my parents concerns, but when it comes down to it, it's my decision. And I think that's how she has to have it because, you know, whether it's successful or whether it's unsuccessful, it has to be her decision that she's going to learn from. And so if she wants to jump into that boat and try and make it work, then that's fine. 
or if she wants to jump into a different boat and try and make that work, then that's fine too. It's her decision. I get that. She is a woman who, regardless of what situation she's in, she's going to be able to provide for herself given her current status, platform, whatever she wants to go off of. I mean, she's going to have it made for a while, just getting to do publicity gigs and all that. It's going to be fine. It's ridiculous. It's just... This whole speech he gives about, like, it's the man's job. I'm just like, no, no, it's not. No, it's not. It's 2019. It's the... the It's not that it's the man's job, but, like... That, I mean, that's literally what he said. He did that say is, that. I am quoting the man. That's what he said. He said, I think it's the man's job to, to make sure that the woman is provided for. And I think that's a dated concept. I think that you need to make sure that the family is cared for. Yeah. And that that is something that it can be a discussion between two parties yeah. as to financially who's going to support that. But it would concern me with what Hannah said, as we are both dreamers, we both like to pursue things and that's our personalities for each of us. And so it works best when at least one person is grounded and able to be able to support the other. So that scares her. And she voiced that. And I think that's, that's a valid concern. It's two people that are like go getters. They want to be able to grow themselves like so much separately that what their dreams are could get them to grow so far apart that they're no longer connected. And I understand that. And I hope that she just considers that. I'm not saying that that means that it is a, it will for sure happen, but I think that she's, she's being really smart about weighing all the pros and cons of it. I think that, yeah, I mean, this is why, I mean, she's doing why this whole situation is weird to me because he's like, yeah, we're both dreamers and I want to try to do whatever I can to make it work. And she's like, we're both dreamers, but I got this other guy over here that I could pick and he's stable. So mm, tough decision. And that's just kind of I don't like that. I don't like it. I don't like it. Yeah. I don't well, like it. Anyway, so they both had. So she, their... gets to be, she gets to be the dreamer no matter what. And mm-hmm. he can either abandon. I mean, he used to he be a dreamer I, no matter what. No, he can either abandon his career or risk that she's going to pick someone else. It sucks. Well, sucks that's yeah. a shitty that's a shitty place to put someone who's she's it, not asking him to give up on their, his dream his no. her parents are but she's not well yeah but she's saying i'm not gonna pick you she probably. didn't say that no but it's just implying anyways it's like if you would just give up on the music thing if you were if you had a stable job like this other guy it'd probably be a lot easier on i mean me. there's only so many dog food companies scott Leave him alone. Leave him. He's in his mid twenties, and he's trying to. I know. It's not like he's a forty-something-year-old man that's still holding on to a music career. He's give him, give him a shot. Let let people try. Let people try the things they want to do. So many people go to stable, boring jobs because it's the safe thing to do. And I think it would have given Hannah's family at least some sort of calm or like sense of assurance if he had said you know like I've got this right now I've got these things lined up I see how it's gonna go and if it doesn't happen by blank these are my backup options I think and you know what who's to say they didn't have that conversation and it just wasn't aired but I think that's kind of what they were looking for yeah I've listened to a lot of interviews with people that have made it in this kind of thing Mm -hmm. and a lot of them say if I felt that I had a backup option I would have quit mm-hmm. and I'm glad I didn't. And these, these are people that have made it. And I yeah. understand that they're the, the, the minority in that, but I don't know. Sometimes you just got to take your shot. And, also, and I just hate the idea of someone taking their shot and trying mm. to do something is a negative of their personality or a negative trait. I don't like it. I don't like it. Speaking from someone who has a sense of musicality, and a sense of good musicianship and sound. I don't think he's got it as far as his vocals go. Songwriting could be another thing. He could be an expert songwriter and he's going to be like on all the records for whoever is going to be the artist that he writes for. And that could be how he makes his money. But I don't think that he has a job as the recording artist. And I know that's harsh. I know it's mean to say. I just don't think that he's got it. Let him take a shot. Let him take a shot. That's he's the worst he's that can happen. He's been having a shot for a bit. He hasn't made it yet. Yeah, I mean, sometimes this stuff takes a long and time, you know, at least. And he doesn't have to be the biggest freaking 
singer in the world. Yep. Well, that's there's, Jed. There's plenty of people that make a career in music that are not famous. It's true. I don't know. But they also have a side gig. He probably has a day job, at least. Like, I wonder what that is. I don't know. I don't know. But it's like, I don't know. I have a day job and I'm working on something else. I know you do. And I, I don't know. It, it upsets me. I'm upset. Well, they have their one-on-ones. She was very complimentary towards Tyler. Tyler hit it off with the family. And you could tell that she was happy that that happened. But also you could tell that there was something that was in the way. She had the time with Jed. You could tell that she wanted it to go well with the family, but it didn't. And she has something with Jed, but she's holding back because of what happened with her family. So next week is the final decision. Or I guess not next week, tomorrow. Tomorrow we know what she does. And Chris has also alluded to the fact that there's going to be something post in the after the final rose. Yeah. Well, that I mean, we all need to keep our eyes peeled for the last thing she said was, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, which is a weird thing to say, considering the actual proposal and everything was done two months ago. Was it? It's supposed to be. Yeah. It was That's my to. point. I don't That's know. my point. It's. Interesting. There's been a lot of things that have There's come been a lot out. Of rumors, apparently. I don't yeah. know what that means. Scott wanted to know what the rumors were, and I said I couldn't tell him what the rumors are unless he wanted to hear who was predicted to win, and then he wanted to know. But then it was like, I don't know if these rumors are really true or not. And so, you know, guys, we're all along for the ride for that live show tomorrow. We're going to see what happens. Maybe Peter comes back for the win. I hope so. You know, I really liked her and Peter together. Me too. I like Pete. It surprised me. I like her and Tyler. I like her and Peter. I, I didn't really like her and Jed. I'm going to be quite honest there. No, I don't like... I, I mean, I, I know I was just defending the guy for like 20 minutes, but I don't think I don't think they like each... I mean, I don't think she likes him that much. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. I don't know. We'll see what tomorrow night know? on The Bachelor finale with After the Final Rose. And then next week, we will pack our luggage and go down to paradise. I can't bit. believe there's no break in between these things. Yeah, and that's two nights every week. I'm not doing that. Well, you can watch Monday, and I'll watch Monday and Tuesday. That's fine. That's fine. And then I'll go watch Love Island. Chase your dreams, kids. The world is coming to an end. Climate change. Don't do an office job. Chase your dreams. No one's going to need an accountant in the apocalypse. So, Scott, what is your thorn oh for this God, week? Oh, my God, introduce the section. You're doing It's Rosie's session. and Thorny's time. Thank you. This is the part of the show where we talk about the good things and the bad things that happened to us in the last week. This is the it's part of the show like, where I introduce it and then Scott explains it. It's kind of like a rose <laughs> and a thorn. Yes, indeed it is. At least so, what is your thorn this week? I asked you first. Fine. My thorn. Yes, and elaborate. She's, and she's sitting right, right next oh. to me right now. Is that my dog, Ghost... Let me look at her. She's a bad this. dog this week. She's been Ghost really annoying. She's a bad girl. Yeah, she's a bad, bad dog. Bad girl. I've been really irritated at her this week. This could have been my rose too, but I decided to do something different. You mean your thorn? I mean thorn. This yeah. is why I explain what the section is, because even you can't remember week to week. So Ghost has been a little bit of a... Yeah, a what has she been doing? A jerk lately. Mm-hmm. Well, number one thing she's been doing is that every time we both leave the house, she gets on the couch. Mm-hmm. She knows she's not allowed on the couch. She knows. And we know she's getting on the couch because she's shedding a lot right now. And so every time we get home, the couch is covered in dog hair. It's awful. You can't sit down on the couch no. because then you're going to get covered in dog do hair. It. And she knows. Ghost. You know, we're going to have to get her know. a crate. You know. She looks so sad right now. She doesn't understand. We're going to have to get her a crate if she doesn't behave. I told her. I told her. We had you a, did? Do you think she understands? We had a whole conversation about it. You did? I what did she say? and we had a con- She didn't say much of anything. She, oh. she was giving me the silent truth. That's a stupid joke. <laughs> what? Um, yeah. So, and, and then she's also scratching on the back door and she's whining. Yeah. She's- I mean, like, what happened to this dog that was so well behaved? Are you just well, relaxing on your discipline? I think I've been told, no structure I've been anymore? told by husky experts. Mm-hmm. And by husky experts, I mean the internet. The internet. Ah, yes. What, what does the internet that say? Huskies go through phases. Oh. Um, and some of those phases, they're jerk faces. So is this like her adolescent years? No, she's she's oh. an old dog. She's Is this like her? Old, no. She's an old woman, so she's, I can just do what I want 
years. Yeah, I mean, she's just going through a little a little disobedient phase, and um, we're going to try to get her out of it. Okay. Just withhold food like you do anyway. I don't. I feed them. Podcasts. Oh, I, I do that. Yeah. I say you could um, do that. I don't do that. Yeah, no, it's been just a frustrating couple of weeks. Mm. And Maggie, on the other hand, has been pretty good. Yeah, she has, hasn't she? she? Pretty good. Yeah. No I mean, bathroom well, in the middle of the night. Relatively. Yeah. What a cute little puppy she's been. <laughs> Cuddly and well behaved. Yeah, th- that's, My, how the tides the, have turned. The unwritten rule of dog ownership is you cannot have two well behaved dogs at the same time. Uh, I guess that's true. Awful. Uh, she has, just so you know, has turned, she was like laying like so she could look at me uh-huh. and she's turned now and she's uh, facing the opposite direction. Good, good call. So shame. Sometimes I wish I could turn around and not look at you too, but. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> at least. Yes. What is your thorn? Okay. So I started watching this show that I really like called Love Island because who doesn't love a reality TV show about me. love? Anyways, so the show's been on CBS, and it's quite the time of commitment. They've decided that every weekday at 7 o'clock, there's going to be an episode. So Monday through Friday, 7 o'clock, that's what I can do, or at least I can record it, you know? And then I can watch it after it's done recording, and when Scott goes to podcast, that so way I have something to do for an hour. Except right now, because AT&T and CBS are in a dispute I didn't know the AT&T and CBS were in dispute until I went to go watch the show. And then lo and behold, I pressed the recording and it has a message of how CBS is not going to be offered to AT&T people right now. And so in order to be able to watch My Love Island, I had to buy CBS All Access, which meant Scott had to buy CBS All Access. So just so the the people at home have a full grasp uh of the scope of what you've just said now. Yeah. We are now paying an additional, on uh-huh. top of our already enormous cable bill and our already yeah. enormous streaming bills. I think we should just get rid of cable. We are paying an additional mm-hmm. $6 a month. Yeah. So you can watch two weeks of a shitty, I mean, terrible... You wanted it anyway. It's got the good fight. Awful. And it has, what, isn't that the Star reality Trek show? show? So, I mean, I did it for reality TV shows, but you're going to do it to benefit your whole viewing experiences. Maybe, maybe, maybe you said it was okay. Yeah, I mean, you're like, it's fine. We're gonna get it anyway. Yeah, but I I did do the one that cost less. I did it. I said it's fine. We're gonna do it anyway. In like a, in like a, an air of defeat because I knew I had lost this. I knew that nothing is gonna stand between my wife and her god awful reality television shows that are coming on every day. Mm -hmm. What a ridiculous idea! Now. You say that, but how many of them have I made you watch? Like maybe two, three thousand tops. Thousand. No, of this show, I have not made you watch that many. Doesn't matter. I yes, know it does. you're watching them. Just yeah. knowing. Who cares if I'm watching it? My rose was going to be the CBS AT and T dispute until no, it was until, not until until you screwed it up with your CBS All Access. <sighs> But guys, she has to wait until the next day. I know. It's horrible. It. It's like I can't like even a, watch it when I want to watch it. I can't watch it live. What's the point? Exactly. There's no way I can vote on the stuff. Not that I was voting on it anyway. I deleted that because I'm not going to give them any more of my phone number information. Yeah. Just to vote. Yeah. You tell uh, them, babe. Just yeah. continue to watch oh, the I show did. religiously and talk about it on the internet yeah. and all those things. So, you know, it's based on a British TV show. We're not the first country to do this. And... I hope it's not a situation of what was that one show that we watched on our honeymoon and we really liked it with the, um, it was that trivia show. And you remember the like guy was on it and then they made an Americanized version and we saw it on Netflix and we were like the chaser. Yeah. Isn't that what it was? The chaser. Yeah. Yeah. So like American television completely ruined that show. I think love Island's trashy enough. You can ruin it if it's American and you know what? I'm glad you admit it's trashy. Yeah. But I like it. I wonder if you're ever going to age out of the reality television show. You know, I've wondered that too. I can hope. But one of my coworkers who's older than me, actually quite a few of them that are older than me, they still watch it. And I talk about it with them. So I don't think so. Maybe it's key to my profession. Well, damn it. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm sorry about CBS. And AT and T. It's okay. I solved the problem. You did. You solved the problem. It was just really irritating. With money. Yep. 
Just throw more money at him. Best way get to what solve, I want. Solve the problem. Exactly. Hooray. What was your rose, though, Scott? My rose is that there's a new Quentin Tarantino movie. Ah, uh, yes. Out today. You do enjoy um, him. I do. I like him a lot. Uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is a movie we saw this weekend. I'm mm-hmm. not going to talk too much about it on here because okay. I'm doing a whole show about it uh, oh, a little yeah. bit later in the week. So. He's that show. Yeah. Um, I, the thing, I just want to like talk about Quentin Tarantino in general because I like him a lot. Mm-hmm. But, like, I guess I don't. Like we met with my parents this weekend, and mm-hmm. and my dad was like, "So, there's that new Quentin Tarantino movie out. He's your guy." And I don't know. Like I was like, "He's my guy." Guess, guess I mean, so. You like his I a, movies? I have a lot of directors I really like, though. I have a lot Spielberg. of Spielberg. Spielberg's a, your guy. There's a lot of directors out there that I will go see what they make the first weekend it comes out no matter what and and tarantino's one of them i think the mm-hmm. thing is just like i think tarantino movies are really fun to talk about so i talk about them a lot so maybe mm-hmm. that's why the perception that he's my guy i don't know I, I think his movies are a lot of fun to digest and discuss and um this one was no exception i've already mm-hmm. I ha- i've been thinking about it basically since we saw it like mm-hmm. there's a lot to not pick, surprised there's a lot to, to process and pick apart and ponder here and um, might i just you know, insert my opinion. Of course about you can. A couple things here. Sure. Don't spoil anything. Leonardo DiCaprio. If Leonardo DiCaprio, according to the Academy, was not already at his prime in the Revenant, he is just continuing to hike up higher in that mountain. This is my favorite performance, I think, other than, you know, the Romeo and Juliet just heartthrob. <laughs> but he was so much fun to watch in this. And I think it's just one of those movies, too. I was telling you, Scott, that I wish I was a director or even just anybody on set whenever he was filming some of these scenes. Because I imagine he was just having a lot of fun. And I really enjoy like watching actors that are very talented do an incredible job as far as performance goes. And like I think... It would be really powerful to get to see that actually in person. Yeah, it was just a really good movie. I think it'd be, it would have been a lot of fun to be on that set. It really would have been. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, hear the rest of my opinions about this movie on, on Thursday. Friday. 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 Recording it Thursday, Friday, release on Friday. August 2nd. Yes. 2019. I'll just play it on my trip back to work. <laughs> Thanks. All right, Elise, what is your rose? I had a really fun Saturday getting to celebrate my birthday with your side of the family. Your birthday, but that was 18 days ago. But you know, when you have a summer birthday, you get to celebrate for pretty much the entire month, if not summer. Oh, I did not know that. It just gets to extend out, yeah. So it's like summer, hey, let's start celebrating pre-birthday, birthday, birthday, post-birthday. It's all summer long. So we went to the, uh, if if you live in Dallas, Mm -hmm. you will know of the Bishop Arts District. It's really nice. There's a street called Bishop. Yeah. And there's a lot of... Art. Arts. Yeah. Over there. They built it out quite a bit. So there's a lot uh, more restaurants and just kind of fun little cafes, desserteries. Yeah. Our, friend's, our friend's bakery is over there. Yes. And so we went and, and stopped Some fun by little there. shops. Um, and it was just a really fun time. Yeah. My mom wanted to go to like a fetish store for some reason. Yeah, that was weird. <laughs> she didn't actually want to go to a fetish store. She was just looking up places to go and she gave us a name of this one place. And we looked it up and we were like, or that's the story, Scott. Mom? That's the story. Mom? Yep. Anyways. So it was a good time. Can't, I enjoyed it. The logo on the store was, you can't spell happiness without penis. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> that was would have been a really great stop for your birthday, I think. That we should been. have really gone there. And then we got grilled cheese. Yeah, it was good to grilled cheese. Mine was so spicy. I kept telling you that you would have hiccuped. That's how spicy it was. That's why I did not try it. That's why I I don't know what they did. I had my fajita grilled cheese. My pimento cheese that I make is not that spicy. I mean, if you let it sit for a while, it can get a kick. But man, they must have had a ton of jalapeno and then added some juice and then put a super spicy chipotle mayo or something on that. I don't know. I'm just saying, if I hadn't had that soup to help dilute that, would have been on fire. Fire. On fire. It was good, but it was just really hot. Good. Yep. All right. That's uh, Roses and Thorns. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about the main Another event. ghost. Who are you going Not to call? Dog. Ghostbusters. Isn't that the song? It's close. Who are you going to call? 
Ghostbusters. Talk to me about Ghostbusters too. Or wait, I read it, right? You read the summary, Sorry. Scott. Yeah. Gosh, it's been so long. All right. Here's the summary of Ghostbusters 2 as written by Elise. <laughs> Insert Ghostbusters 1 summary here with the addition of a baby and more Rick Moranis. <laughs> There are ghosts. The Ghostbusters trap them, and the main evil ghost tries to destroy the world. Instead of a marshmallow man, the Statue of Liberty comes to save the day. Hooray for proton packs. <laughs> a, a lot of sarcasm in this one, at least, for one of my favorite movies of all time. Is this really? I think the original is your favorite movie of all time, and this one is just like a, yay, it's all the guys that are back again. And it's not like a really good movie. It's just more of like the nostalgia of you liked the first movie. And so you're happy that everyone's back together and doing the exact same thing over and over hey, again. Hey, Elise, let me tell you something about children. Yeah. Children uh -huh. are stupid. Are they? Yeah. So uh, I did. I, not the ones that I teach. One of the first, the most surprising things in my life was the realization that most people hate Ghostbusters too. What? Yeah. People hate this movie, Scott? Yes. Why? Every, people, everyone loves Ghostbusters. Everybody yeah. loves the first Ghostbusters. Mm -hmm. It's great. It's hilarious. Everybody loves it. People do not like Ghostbusters 2. People do not think Ghostbusters 2 is a good movie. And you know what? I'm not here to defend Ghostbusters 2, okay? I thought you were. I'm not. That is not what I'm here to do. Okay, what are you here to do then? I am here to tell the story of a boy. Ah, uh, and who's that boy? A boy. Oscar? Who really loved Winston, <laughs> the Ghostbuster. Yeah. And he was in He's this movie. He's not really in this very much. He's in it more than he was in the first one. Okay. And he's in this movie more. Uh-huh. And, and also the Statue of Liberty moves and there's hilarious pink slime. Okay. And the Titan. I love this movie. I have a question, though. Yes. Is Winston really your favorite because he's actually your favorite? Or is Winston the one that was like, whenever you were playing, everybody else had already picked the other ones. And so you had to pick Winston. And so then you grew to love him. Because that's what had to happen with my Power Rangers. It was like everybody had already picked their Power Ranger. And there were only two girl Power Rangers. And so my sister was always the pink one. And so I had to be the yellow one. And then I just grew to love the yellow Power Ranger. And so if you're like, well, who's your favorite Power Ranger? My own, I would say the yellow one but it wasn't because i really liked that one the best it was just because i grew to like that one over time so is this your story of winston or do you actually like winston the best did you take one breath in that entire time i don't know i and my group of friends mm -hmm. picked first you did i did interesting yeah. i was leonardo okay i okay. was the red ranger okay and i wanted to be winced but is this like you out of one of, it's like a group of one i had like, friends i okay. definitely had friends you could say objectively that i had all i the wanted friends. you to do that thank you kudos um, to you no yeah I, I this was not that but you know i just want i liked winston and okay. the, the one of the things that was a bummer about the first movie well because you gotta understand like like the, the the trio of of harold ramus dan Aykroyd, and um and bill, bill murray. murray like as a kid I, I, had, didn't appreciate I had no that. meaning. There was yeah. no meaning attached to it. Like it was just these are these are the Ghostbusters. So like there was no there was no inherent bias coming in with it. So I picked the one I thought was the, the coolest one, the funniest one, the nicest one, and hmm. that was the one I thought it was. Um, and so I always loved Winston. Um, Which now, one's course, who's my favorite? Who's your favorite? Yeah, who's my favorite? Who's your favorite? And you'll have to say the actors' names because I still don't remember all of the characters' names. I think your favorite is Egon. No. What? What's no. Wrong with Egon. Everything. Egon's is my second wrong with favorite. Him. He's the glasses, right? Yeah. Yeah. No. Oh, you're a jerk. What's wrong with glasses? You wear glasses. Nothing's wrong with glasses. That's just his like distinguishing. He had characteristic. a slinky. He had part of a slinky. Yeah, and then he flattened it but out. But he straightened yeah, it. Yeah, straightened it out. Whatever. No. Who's your favorite? Duh, Bill Murray. Boring. Boring. No. Everybody likes Peter. Boring. Uh, he's just so funny. That's my thing. It's like it's even in the things where he doesn't say anything. Oh, he's it's hilarious. It's just his manner. It's, 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 so he's fun to watch. It's so hilarious. I mean, we talked about this when we talked about Ghostbusters One. We did. Um, but like, how much of the stuff goes over your head when you're a kid watching it? Like all the meat. Like not only does all the like the inappropriate 
like double entendre go over your head. Mm -hmm. But like the genius of what Bill Murray's doing in yes. the movie just completely goes over your head. Um, just and both it, it, he's playing the same character. He's doing basically the same thing. Okay, let's. It is the same movie. Like yes, it's the same movie. And I told you too. I think that this movie was really more of the basis for the women's Ghostbusters because I thought that the women's Ghostbusters movie reflected this one a little bit more than the I first one. I don't know one. why you think that. I think though. it's just because there's like the whole art thing. There's the whole what what know. whole art thing? Didn't think of it like that. The art thing at the very beginning of the movie. They they go into a haunted house in the opening but of the movie. But it's the art that's and like there's popping one, out. There's one painting. It's still it's art. <laughs> <laughs> it's still art and then it ends in like I know it's the hotel but it just looked a lot like the museum and then you know it's just it's more of that movie I'm sorry Scott I don't think I so. interrupted you again yeah I don't even Please. I don't even remember what I was talking about you're talking about how it was the same movie yeah it is it is the same movie and and look this is the first time I've seen this movie in a while. Mm -hmm. And this is the first time that I really can confidently say, yeah, it's a worse movie. Like every other time I've watched this movie, I've like you nostalgia blinders on. I watched this movie probably as many, if not, no, not more, but probably almost as many times as I watched the first one. And so there's so much of it that I just love. There's still so much that I love, but like I saw the chinks in it for the first time. I saw like the places where the plot line not only is rehashed, but just doesn't like line up as smoothly. It mm -hmm. just doesn't come together as smoothly. It doesn't feel like things flow quite as nicely. The relationships are kind of confused in some ways. Um, and, you know, hmm. still not enough Winston. Just needs more Winston. What is you and Winston? You and Winston's. I don't know. I love the name. You like New Girl Winston. I do. Too. I love New Girl Winston. It's just you I and love Winston's. both of the New Girl Winston's. Mm. You know what I really like about rewatching these movies with you What's that? from your childhood is that I notice things that you didn't notice. Well, yeah, and so like, like it's me bringing attention to things yeah. that I think are funny because I'm watching different characters or different things in well, the movie you're because with I fresh like eyes, it too. Like I feel yeah. like I've seen the scene so many times. I'm not yeah. like. You know, I'm watching the scene, but I'm not like, you know, it's different, you know? Yeah. And so like, so Bill Murray is my favorite character out of all the Ghostbusters. And there's this part where they all go to Sigourney Weaver's apartment in order to investigate because the baby was getting pushed around by a ghost. And so she's <laughs> introducing the baby to everybody. And then Bill Murray just like doesn't say anything and just turns around and just starts walking off. And it's like, it's perfect for the character because of what? has gone on yeah. just in their relationship and everything. It's just, I love Bill Murray. And so getting to watch him, that's just who, if there's everybody on screen and I want to see like what mannerisms people are doing, I just watch him. He's brilliant. Because he's hilarious. He's brilliant. He is. And he's, he's brilliant. Like it's so many of the subtleties of what he's doing. Like I said, I just completely missed. Yeah. That's probably why he wasn't my favorite, but yeah, I mean now with the full context, I can understand the brilliance of Ackroyd, uh, Murray and Ramis and, like what they brought to both these movies, mm -hmm. even though this movie is like, yeah, this movie's not very good. Um, but I think there's still some really just wonderful moments in yeah. here. I really do. Um, I, I think <laughs> the entire thing with Peter, like taking pictures of the painting is hilarious. Um, I just, there's so, there's so much to like here. There's there so is. much to like. And so much to hate though, too. So, God, no, I don't hate any of it. Ugh. Sigourney it's Weaver. The same thing Sigourney over and over. <laughs> Tell me the plot to Ghostbusters 1. The plot to Ghostbusters yeah. 1. Yeah. They recognize there's through. ghosts Just in the library. They assemble. They try and fight ghosts. There's a ghost in the fridge that possesses a person. Tries to take over the world. The Ghostbusters kill it. Giant marshmallow okay, man. Yeah, the end. I, I was hoping for a little bit more detail. No, no. <laughs> Just lot. like the like the, that's almost like saying, um, well, there's some characters. And uh, there's some antagonists, and they conflict, and then one of them wins at the end. It's true. And, uh, that's, that's what happens, movie. basically. Yeah, I know. That's what happens in every story. Oh, not always. Sometimes the bad guys win, at least for the first movie, and then there's a sequel. I didn't say that the protagonist won. I said somebody wins. Mm. So I headed off your complaint at the pass, and you weren't even paying enough attention to notice it. You're like Bill Murray in Ghostbusters 2. When you're not even p paying attention to Dana's complaints. 
or something. Okay. Okay. I wanted to be like <laughs> Bill Murray, though. You did? Because, like, his bachelor pad where he's like, I have, I have, like, I don't just have clean and dirty. There are very many subtle levels. Yeah, you still have that until I throw it in the hamper and then wash it. Yeah, well, you know, there's mm-hmm. clean. There's not, it's not binary. It's clean, kind of clean, a little bit clean. Mm, maybe you can get away with it. Only if you're going to, like, just the store and then it's time to be washed. Who washes it? You do, because you're wonderful, and I love you for it. Who folds it? What? I don't understand why Who you're doing it. Who puts it away? I don't understand why you're doing this. Exactly. I don't understand. I, That's the point, Scott. I was never claiming. That's the point. None of this was ever a critique of you or I anything know. you were doing. I know. So you, even though you liked Winston, you still wanted to be Bill Murray? That's, well, but, I mean, like the thing about Winston in these movies is you don't, like... He's, He's not very not characterized. not really important. Like, yeah. Peter is the protagonist. You see Peter's home life. You see so it's maybe Peter's you should like Peter. I do like Peter. I think just he wanted... should be your favorite. What? Okay, I tell you what. Next time we play pretend Ghostbusters, okay, I will choose Peter. But that's who I like. Well, so if we're playing together. I choose Peter. Well, what if we? Uh, here's what you do when I was a kid. I pick from the Sometime, girl cast, no, and you pick from the boy cast. No, sometimes when there's a disagreement, I did I had you to play deal paper, with this rock, when I was a scissors. kid. No, no, you just both be the character, and then you invent a story in which one of them came from another universe. No, that's and so. It's like the it's that's the lame. double. It's the double Peter episode. That's lame. That is not lame. That is. Man, I'm glad. It's a cop out. I'm glad I didn't know you as a little kid because you would have just shat all over our fun pretend games and be like, no, that's stupid. Nah. Yeah. Let's go listen to music and dance. Nah. Yeah. You know, okay. Let's go back to Rosie's Thornies for a second because you can't, no, you can't I found this new choreographer that I had never watched before and started watching some of her videos yesterday. And I mean, like, her dancing makes me want to go back and dance again it's phenomenal what is that have evidently to- they have this new class called heels where you just wear high heels and you do dance in high heels which i think sounds like it would really hurt my feet but also like how sassy and fun i really want to do that anyways <laughs> what does that have to do with roses and thornies it could have been my rosie it's an addition to my Rosie, the Galen Hooks choreography. Okay. So Ghostbusters. Yeah, Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters, what do you want? More Rick Moranis. And I got it. He retired. He's I know, done. that was so sad. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's great in this. Um, so there's three Ghostbusters. Annie Potts is great. Right. Movies? Is it the original, the trilogy, or is it just one and two and then the women's? One and two and then the women's. Okay. For some reason, I thought there was a third they're one. They're making a new one that comes oh, they out are? in 2020. Another with the original cast or with the women's cast? Um, it's going to be... Or both. They're going for like a Stranger Things deal, so they're going to be younger kids. Um, but apparently, a lot of the main cast is coming back. Mm-hmm. Not all of them, of course, because uh, Egon, the one you insulted mercilessly, has passed away. And you should feel bad. Well, about you that. know what? Technology nowadays, they can bring them back no. if they want. That's what some people said. It's like, ooh, he should be a ghost in the next movie. And I was like, no, that's a fucking awful I mean, thing to do. He doesn't have to be do. a ghost. He can just be the Star Wars technology. Remember? Yeah. One Star Wars I, movie? Yeah, but I hated that. That was awful. I mean, you hated it until it's someone that you love that's brought back. No. And I then you're going to love it. You're going to be it. like, wow, such a more. great job. We're being guys. very bickery today, you and I. Are we? There's a little, yeah, there's a little sharpness to it. Is there a little edges. tension? Maybe. Well, you know what, Scott? Maybe it's because this is like my favorite movie ever and you're just pooping it's all not, over it's it. It's your second favorite movie ever because you like Ghostbusters the original even more. Yeah, but in my brain, they They're combine the same movie? into one okay, movie. Okay, so I guess that makes sense. I want to tell you a story about this movie, though. Uh, I told you this while we were watching, yes. though. Okay. So like the first Ghostbusters movie, yes. I did not have a video cassette of this oh, yes. because, um, well, because it was 1991 or 92 or something and uh, as we were poor. Mm-hmm. Um, but we did have a couple of like re-record, like we did have a VCR and we did yeah. have a couple like blank ones that you could record stuff off TV. Yeah. And so I had one for Ghostbusters 1 and 2. It was on the same cassette, I think. Um, and I had both movies recorded on this cassette commercials included. It was like when they played on ABC or something. 
Um, but for whatever reason, whether the recording messed up or like the tape just ran out or what have you, the Ghostbusters 2 one ends like 15 minutes before the end of the movie. Um, and so like it was like it was one of the points where the sta- they had gotten in the Statue of Liberty. They had slimed the Statue of Liberty and made it walk. And um, it was like ste- it stepped on a police car, like the Statue of Liberty accidentally stepped on a police car. I remember that. And then and then my video goes and it's ah, gone ah, and none awful. of the rest of the movie I saw. And I watched it that way forever, forever. You just thought that the movie ended there? No, I think I knew it didn't end, but I had no I didn't remember the ending mm. until until I got it on DVD, like years and years and years That's a later. a long time. Yeah, it had to have been like. 10 years later, probably. Did you know the ending? You just hadn't seen the ending? I had seen it ending? once, I think. Okay. I had seen it one time. So I knew enough uh, to know generally what it was. Mm-hmm. But no, for the longest time, I didn't see, I didn't mm. necessarily remember how this movie ended. Um, and it's just every time I see that foot come down and crush that car, like I know, like there's a moment of Bloop. like, there's a moment of like, <gasps> where it goes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so that's a, yep. that's the story of 1989. And that time when when the world was a different place, at least. Yeah. Now it would be streaming right away. And yeah. Watch Playing it back to back to back. You yeah. could just watch commercials. It yeah. Psh, commercials. Who needs those? Yeah. So, Scott, uh, one thing that I learned about relationships. Oh. In this movie. Yeah. Is that, you know, and I guess. This is, you know, like romantic relationships and just all relationships. Uh huh. But it's OK. And sometimes it's good to give second chances. Yeah. You know, and the. Over time, people that could potentially have had some issues being together, you know, just some time apart in order to work on themselves and they can come back. You can give them another chance and they can hopefully be able to show that they've proven themselves different. Yeah. I mean, especially if you're trying to write a sequel and you Mm -hmm. like can't think of what to do, Mm -hmm. just completely resetting the romantic relationship is a great way to add more conflict. It's true. Yeah. No, I, I totally agree, though. Like, I mean, that's that's a good point. Like they we don't get to see pete vankman screw up the relationship but you but know and we understand can absolutely why believe why yes. pete vankman would screw up the relationship um and she does she gives him a second chance and it's kind of slow moving throughout the course of the movie right mm-hmm. like uh, one thing i do love is that the first scene that he comes in there like i'm not gonna like call i think bill murray is brilliant i think his brilliance is borderline absurd at times like and mm-hmm. when he when she says hi to him for the first time and he returns he turns around and says hello dana and like tries to do a sexy voice and it's just absurd. Mm-hmm. But the thing that I think that that scene does accomplish is there's actual like chemistry. There's tension there between is. them um, that's established right away. So like you believe wh- how they could get to a place where they're going out on mm-hmm. a date before he gets arrested um, and why. Yeah. And like he goes from being the guy who like did your little turnaround walk out the second he saw the baby to the guy that like like dives to catch the baby after the yeah. ghost dropped it, um, saving the kid's life. So, yeah, I mean, it's him kind of um, coming into responsibility a little mm-hmm. bit. I have another thing, too. What's that? It's just about the power of strength of bond, of friendship. Mm-hmm. You know, those Ghostbusters, they had some hard times. They did. but Their they business fell together. apart, but they, you know, like continued to be friends throughout it all. And then when it came time to rally together and do what they'd done before, they did it again. They exactly had each other's the backs. Same. <laughs> they did it again exactly the yeah. same. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, those are some lessons I learned. I agree. I agree. Um, yeah. Also, you know, the power of positivity. Ah, yes. That's a good one, too. Because positivity won the day. The mood slime feeds on negative energies. I'll mm-hmm. be treating people like mm-hmm. crap, being a jerk, being rude. So that's Statue of Liberty, the symbol of positivity. God. In 1989... Would the Statue of Liberty be a symbol of positivity in the year 2019? That's a good question. 30 years later, would would the Statue of Liberty represent enough positivity in these are difficult times? I don't know, because I think I think we struggle with I think we're struggling right now with the meaning, the symbol that is the Statue of Liberty and what our country has become. Right. Mm-hmm. I think that there's a little bit of a disconnect there. And and let's be honest here. There's always been a disconnect. There always has been a disconnect. But in 1989, I think a lot more people were uh, more ignorant of that fact. And so it could be this powerful rallying cry. Um, but now I don't know. I don't know. 
I don't know if Ghostbusters hop into a Statue of Liberty and, and crack a slime wall with positivity with the statue's torch. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I think it would have to be something different. I think it would have to be, you know, like, thinking back. It would be like something superhero related. Like they put slime on like a like a Superman doll. No, wait, we hate no? DC on like a, like no, a Captain America see, doll. I'm going to take it back and I'm going to say like the last time that I felt like our country has actually really rallied together was in the hard time of whenever the like tragic event of September 11th had happened. Well, yeah, but then but that, I don't know how you would like. Then that went to shit like immediately because we started doing stupid stuff. I know, but like, it was just like, like that invading was the a country moment. and killing m- thousands of people. But it was still, like, the moment I felt like of the most pure, like, yeah, we I, wanted to help each other. Yeah, I mean, I agree. The time right after 9-11 was absolutely this this brief moment of, like, the country rallying around itself. But, I mean, I think that ended up being, like, more damaging than it was good, right? Mm-hmm. Because I think that that That's resulted nice. in a lot of a lot of support for choices and decisions the government made that they should not have. Uh, Iraq, for for instance. I think so, that also it's just you know. I think I think that kind of that kind of nationalistic patriotism is, like I I completely agree that like we we su- we want to support each other and and you know gather around and and support and help each other heal in this in this moment of trauma. Absolutely, that is the good. But I think the the kind of jingoistic nationalism that came after it that. Just well, said, I'm just saying, like, if you want, like, a symbol of, of hope and positivity. The I Twin felt, Towers? Not that, but, like. You're like, walking Twin Towers? Oh, my gosh. No, that's yeah, just awful, that's awful, Scott. I'm just saying, like. The Freedom Tower? Would they slime the Freedom Tower? I don't know. It's way bigger. It was really big. It's beautiful, though. What would you, if you. Did you go to the memorial? Have you been? The I was with you. We went. We there. went together to the Trade Center yeah, Memorial. Yeah, we Did we? Yeah. I don't remember going there with you. <laughs> um, Elise, huh. let's. This Maybe is a good. This is a good thought experiment. If yeah. you needed to to slime one symbol, positive <laughs> symbol, <laughs> to defeat evil, what would your s- slime symbol of positivity you would ride around in? If I needed to, like, have it go towards something. What do you mean? Well, you're like, Just if go I crazy needed with to... It. Sl- Just go oh, crazy with it. Okay, slime it, like, on the inside. Slime it. Yeah. Um, I don't know. <laughs> what is there? This is not good audio. We should slime Mount Rushmore. Mount Rushmore. Yes. There we go. Just a bunch of fucking heads. <laughs> just, just, just chomping their way. <laughs> and then they try and eat it. I think that would be funny. All right. Mount and it's Rushmore. it's just like George Washington coming to try and eat you <laughs> with his cement teeth. All right. Or like rock teeth. All right. That's good. Yeah. That's good. What about you? Um, I would probably do the Lincoln Memorial. He'd get up off of his chair. He'd oh. probably bring his chair with him and just like bash it over. He would the just like do the head. scoot, like yeah. the the legs are the only mobile thing, and he drags uh-huh. his chair the whole time. And you're like, dude, you got legs for a reason. Stand up and use them. And he's like, I can't, I can't. Oh, wait, I'm changing my answer. Okay. In downtown mm-hmm. Dallas, there's mm-hmm. this giant eyeball sculpture. Oh, there is. <laughs> it's just it's just a lidless eyeball. It's just rolling. It's scary. I see you. I want to slime that and make that move. Okay. What music what music do you think the slime would like in in 2019? It wouldn't be Jerry Lewis still probably, right? No, I kind of want it to be like some weird classical thing that would have like this opera of like oh, la, 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 la. you know like in the background and everyone's like what in the world is going on? No, but I really, wanna... you know who I think it would be? Huh? Queen B. Can you imagine Beyoncé coming out of the mouth? Of George Washington and that like <laughs> Oh not literally Beyonce. You meant the music. No, no, no. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Diva is a female version of a hustler. Of a, of a <laughs> I mean like um single ladies. Um I mean like that would be powerful. <laughs> and can you just imagine the entire United States rallying behind That would defeat all evil. I think I, it would I can't imagine an evil that could stand up. It's to that. true. Well, there we did it. We did it. We made yes. 2019's version. Beyonce, of Mount too. Rushmore. Yeah, 
I mean, we should carve her face in rock. <laughs> we should. Okay. okay, Elise, you get started on that. You a petition. You start the petition to carve Beyonce's face in rock. Fund. What should we call it? Um. Be more. Be more. Mount Rushmore. Be more. Mount Be more. Baymore. Mount Baymore. Yeah. Is it just Beyonce? Duh. Do we do any of <laughs> Destiny's Child on there? No. <laughs> Remember, they're not important. It's just like her over and over again. Who would the the pop Mount Rushmore be? Um, Beyonce. Uh huh. Michael Jackson's See, too controversial. Jackson too, you can't yeah. you can't do that based on what he's done. Um, would they do a beetle? I don't know. Like that's a, I think they would have to. Yeah. Like, but just all four of them really <laughs> tiny <laughs> like beetle? right next to him. Yeah. Uh maybe yeah. just an actual beetle, like just as a symbol oh, for yes, the beetles. Yes, just the bug. Yeah. The bug to encompass them all. Yes. And we could uh, continue this bee theme. Beyoncé. Bee. Beetle. Um, I don't know any more bees. Backstreet, Backstreet Boys. Boys. That's a good one. But then it's another like we just have to put a door. Yeah, the back door. Britney Spears. Ah, Britney. That's a good one. Christina. I mean, but now I'm like just thinking like in my own, you know, like upbringing. Yeah, I don't know. We'll have to think about I mean, that. That's the problem. Is pop music has been around for a long Pop-ular time. Popular at the time. Mm-hmm. Oh, is that what that means? That was a joke. You didn't know what that meant. Yes, I did. No, you didn't. It's okay. Now you do. Anyway, Scott, what are we doing next week? Next week, it is our final episode. Of this structure. Final episode ever. It's about time we finished it. Final episode ever. Not ever. Just Wait, we in haven't structure. Co- we haven't compared and contrasted the movies. Yet. There's not really much to compare and contrast. How do Steel you do Magnolias that? and Ghostbusters relate to each other? Well, um, there's, there's a powerful woman in both of them uh, who cares strongly about her baby. Yeah. Willing to do whatever it takes to keep her baby alive. Yeah. There's a group of men. Strong friendship bond. There's a group of women. Strong friendship bond. There are ghosts. In both? Yeah. Who's the one in the first Steel uh, Magnolias? Uh, the ghost of Julia Roberts. No, is over, didn't happen. It's like over the entire movie. Not true. Movie. No, she's there. No. Uh, not literally there. You're lying. She's, You're making it up. She's spiritually there, at least. Whatever. Okay. On to the next. Um. Well. Uh, well. We had to watch them both for the... 30 going on 30. Okay, that's a bad one. They're both turning 30 this year. They both feature um, eggs. I got nothing. Yeah. That's the best I could get. One had a cast that has won a ton of Academy Awards. And the other was Steel Magnolias. Boom! No. And the other didn't ween, win. Diddly squat ween. Has no Bill Murray ever been nominated i think he was nominated for lost in translation that's a great freaking movie i've never seen it what never seen it we're canceling the show's format too early sorry how have you never seen lost in never translation? seen it. it must have been lost in translation that's a dumb joke at least next week yep. we are covering lost in translation and about time no, we're watching a movie called about time um this is our final episode under this format and we'll be going to our new format the week after that but we thought we'd get together and talk about one of the movies that is the most important thing to us and i think we're i think we're both going to have a story about why we fell in love with this movie and then maybe why we fell in love with each other around this movie Hmm, so i think it's going to be a good episode so tune in also we'll conclude the bachelor i guess yeah, we'll just talk about it after the fact. Um, and Bip. Then, and I think then, Bip starts and then maybe next we'll, week. We'll give a little bit. No, it can't. It's too soon. Yeah, August the fifth. And then that's we'll, next Monday. And then we'll what, give what? a little uh, a little uh, preview for mm, what you say. Yep. All right, guys. What's the outro again? That's, That's all, all we, we have, have for this week. For this week. If you like this podcast, you can check out all the other shows we do here over at doofmedia.com. Also, consider donating to our Patreon. What is that, Scott? 
uh, that is a place where you can donate to creators to help support them. Uh, and, what, and where donate. do I find that? It's at a website called Patreon.com. Okay. And then you type a slashy. And then you type Doof Media. Okay. And then you press the enter button on your keyboard. And I'll take you to the website. Well, and, and then you how press, much can they give, Scott? And then you press... Um, Donate now. Okay. And when they do that, what are their choices? How much should they give, Scott? They can give um, anywhere from one dollar to uh, infinity dollars. Their whole bank account, if they'd the, like. In theory, yeah, I recommend they don't do that. You know, okay. just just for their own well, financial well being. So if they just subtract the amount of like fixed expenses that they have and then just give the rest of it, that's okay to do if they would like. I think that sounds reasonable. Okay. That's what I mean. They call it variable expenses for a reason, yeah. right? Exactly. Yeah. So also, if you have any listening via Apple Podcasts, why don't you head on over there and drop us a rating and a review? You know, five star. You can't do 10 star, but you can leave like a, a double five if you if you could. I know you can't. But yeah. And a reminder if you just that, think about it, that's good enough. And a reminder that once we switch over to the new format, it is going to be super, 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 super important for you guys to rate and review us right away um, because it's a new show. Because that's how we get like pop podcast of the year. Hey, Elise popular podcast of the year guys did you know what that uh, our friends at media md have officially joined the doof network you know i knew that but i don't know if everybody knew that yeah everyone media md who brings you shows uh -huh. on the doof network called deep impact is now uh bringing their other show media md uh -huh. to the network um, cool we've been working with those guys for six months now and we've really enjoyed it and they had another show and we said Bring that on in, so uh, you can find Media MD show. It is a so it is a like a, a movies and television and books. It's kind of like a all all encompassing entertainment mm -hmm. type show. Um, each week, or sorry, each fortnight. The video game. No. Uh, no, no bummer. No, 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 no. no. The oh, word, they're actually the word using it for like weeks. the reason it should be used. Yeah, and the one that I'm like, oh, that's good. Yeah. I'm glad Fortnite means something true well, and it's honest. It's spelled differently than the game Fortnite. Ah. Uh, Each Fortnite, uh, one of them will prescribe uh, a piece of media to the other that oh, they haven't seen yet. so that's why yet. it's MD. Yes, exactly. I'm just explaining this to people that way. They don't have to think about it. Mm -hmm. and, then the, and then they will meet back up two weeks later and talk about it and then prescribe something else. And then it goes from there. Mm. So it's a really fun show. Uh, they recently did The Land Before Time because they're copying us. Ugh. But... Uh, you should check that out. You can find it at our website. Are they going to do Lost in Translation? I don't know. They Maybe might have they already should. done that. It depends on... They only do things that only one of them has seen. So what if they've both seen it? Because they should because it's a great movie. Maybe one of them just pretends that they haven't seen it. All right, guys. Yes. That's it for us. Next week. See you next week. About time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.